All right, man, real quick. I took the live down from Monday. So, yeah, you can catch it on the podcast platforms, Apple, Google, Spotify, Anchor, all that good stuff. So, um, so just to let y'all know if y'all was looking for this off YouTube. But nonetheless, let's, uh, let's keep it moving. All right, so... Uh, um. I don't even know where I was about to go with this. Uh, yeah, Jerron Ennis and uh, Terrence Crawford. So, basically, Steven Nelson came out and said some more things. So, also, uh, Bo Mac daughter been posting on Facebook, free Bo Mac, and they kind of been giving updates on the BNB page about his fighters and what's going on and all that, dude. That, I mean, I think I, I just read a uh, – um, I just read a uh, uh, YouTube – uh, title, you know, the, you know what the title is, but I was seeing Frank Warren. It said that basically Bo Mac ain't getting out, so it is what it is. You know, don't really know what happened, so I can't speak on it, man. I don't want to speak on that situation anyway, but I don't know what happened. But hey, it is what it is, you know. Um, you know, you go into somewhere like that, that's you know, they don't play about them guns, so you know what the deal is, but uh. But yeah, nonetheless, man. Uh still, you know, keep me on prayers, whatever if you wish to, or you know, whatever you believe in. But uh so basically you see the title. Um, and you know, it really ain't about the title, it's about the title, but it's not about the title. It's more about this uh inconsistent, you know, uh narrative they got. So basically, um You know, it said Booz Ennis doesn't have the following to fight Crawford, says Steven Nelson. You already know who wrote it. Don't wake me. I'm dreaming. This weak ass writer named Chris Williams, which everybody in the world want to smack him. Uh, Booz is a young, talented kid. He doesn't have the experience in the following to talk on Buzz level. Nelson to Marco boxing on why Jerron Booz Ennis is an, isn't an option, I think he meant. And they need to get an a editor. Because Chris Williams, don't wake me, you know, can't even fucking cream from the bank. He's <laughs> the head of the CMB, can't even edit his own shit, can't even proofread. Uh, I ain't like to proofread neither, though, but hey, I ain't no writer. <laughs> I got a pistol in the car, not a star. Woo. People are like, he's ducky. You talking about a guy that's living, uh, that fights for a living, that's been fighting since he was seven. Nelson said about Crawford about why he shouldn't have to defend his IBF uh, title against his mandatory challenger, uh, Jerron Ennis. He said, I mean, Crawford is getting old, 36. The hairline is receding like a tide going out, and that, that's the last thing he needs to face as a young, well, that's my opinion, as a young killer. I mean, shit. See how you hating on his hairline? You ain't talking about Earl Smith's ass. Kissing up on little boys. She, he, Chris Williams probably one of them ninjas that uh, Errol Smith be kissing on. He Crawford comes everything up and down the ranks. Is scared to fight an uh, up and coming a fighter. At, at this point of business, that's why Errol Smith rematch is not profitable. But it's not fighting about that. Oh, this is his opinion. How you gonna use a quote and put your opinion in here now? That's crazy. So he basically quoting his opinion so people can read it. So look here, man. I want to see if Steven said something else. Well, yeah, he said he got out of that contract. Nelson said about Crawford having no choice but to fight Spence if he agreed to 47. It's still a waste of time, said Nelson, about his belief waste time for Crawford to fight Spence again. Now, um, so uh, I'm trying to see. All right, we got the gist of it. But at the end of the day, dude, he was the same people. These are the same people who wasn't screaming for Earl Smith to defend his mandatory versus Jerron Boots Ennis because Ennis was the interim title holder for a long time. They weren't screaming why Jerron Boots Ennis, uh, why Earl Smith, you know, didn't tune up against Jerron Boots Ennis versus uh, before he fought Terrence Crawford. Even when he was talks about him fighting Keith Thurman, nobody said why Jerron Boots Ennis didn't hop in the IBF. He cloud chasing. He cloud chasing. Jerron Boots Ennis ain't ready for no Terrence Crawford. I think he can compete. But he not ready to win. Dude, this is a dude that just got his first main event on Showtime Championship Boxing. And I'm a fan. 
I like Jerron Bruce Ennis. Let's keep it a bean. He just started, got a main event. So, you you know, how you going to sell that on pay-per-view? Well, then again, some people say they put Luis Ortiz and Charles Martin on pay-per-view. But how you going to sell it? It's going to be profitable. You know, that's the million-dollar question. But at the same time, dude, I do understand, you know, all they want to do is protect Earl Spence. Earl Spence should start with Jerron Ennis to get ready for Terrence Crawford. Oh, Terrence Crawford, why are you leaving? He should fight Jerron Ennis. Now they want to go ahead and cross over to Jerron Ennisism and, you know, you know, uh, cockroach Jerron is, uh, Ennis. Like I said before, y'all the same people who said a guy who won Undisputed at 140, who was a lineal at 140, who was a lineal title holder, or champion at 135 pounds had did nothing to deserve Errol Spence. So now Jerron Ennis, who's the interim uh, IBF title holder, all oh, he did enough to fight Errol Spence. I mean, he do enough to deserve a Terrence Crawford fight. Think about that for a minute. This dude ain't had a real title. He ain't never been lineal. He never run a real belt. He never unified a belt. Matter of fact, he just headlined his first card on Showtime. Come on. You know what I'm saying? You know. You know what I'm saying? Come on, let's keep it real. Let's keep it real. Let's keep it real. So if Terrence Crawford didn't do enough to deserve the big guppy, all right, catfish, you know, I said cap, not catfish, catfish, if he didn't do enough to deserve Errol Spence, at that point, he was that accomplished, but Jerron Boots Ennis ain't even 1% accomplishes that. Come on, Jerron Ennis ain't went overseas and won no belt. This dude's just star headlining. Now, Bud want to fight him, I'm not going to be against it. But I understand what Bud's trying to do. He's trying to go crash out. Yeah, I said crash out. Go get sparked by uh, Canelo, cash that check, and retire humbly. He's going to mortgage his oh, Not mortgage. He's going to straight up sell that hoe. First Canelo Alvarez. He's going to straight up sell it. You know? I, you know, and I, I don't miss no words. He's going to get iced. Is this boxing one on? Let's Canelo Alvarez lose to Charlo or... He fall off a cliff, he gonna get ice, ice, baby. And I'm not gonna watch it either. He ain't gonna watch no mess can do no brother like that. But Jerron Ennis, yeah, you know, he's just to the point where he gotta get the fights. He gotta get the experience. And that's okay. Now they gotta start giving him the Keith Thurmans and Putting him on that type of pedestal, he got to go pick up belts. And unfortunately for him, I think uh, Virgil Ortiz said he coming back. He going back to school. So that should let you know something. He said on Facebook, if it was real, he coming back. But, um, you know, but um, it's going to be at, at 154, I believe he said. It's going to be at 154 pounds. So he lost, you know, he lost a, a, a big welterweight fight right there. Now it's Keith Thurman. And they're going to, you know, pick Keith Thurman. They have to drag Keith Thurman in there, kick it in screaming in my TV voice. They got to drag Keith Thurman in there, kicking and screaming. So. You know, that is what it is. That is what it is. But for people to turn around and just be, you know, and, and, and be hypocrites just like that, just let you know these, you know, the guys y'all arguing with, the guys y'all debating with, the guys that y'all are talking on the internet with, all this is just for monetary reasons. All this is to admit because they was raised by a woman, right? They was raised by a woman, and they can't admit that they wrong. Women, that's what women do. Women got a hard time saying they sorry. 
right? Women have a hard time saying they sorry. Women got a hard time saying they wrong. They get on their hands and knees and apologize to you. You know, you catch my drift, not apologize, but they do sexual acts to apologize before they say they was wrong. Tell me I'm wrong. That's a women woman trait, not to admit when they're wrong. This is why back in one of the reasons back in the day they didn't believe in having females leaders. This is why your daughter would marry and he would become a king and she would be the queen when they didn't have a bloodline to another uh, son or man, a man. Like I said before, just take your L. Ain't nothing wrong with it, bro. Like Payroll said, I bounced back from the L's I rolled. I rose. A lot of y'all like y'all don't know how to lose, bro. Y'all the same ones where old girls say, no, thank you. I'm not interested. Oh, F you funky ass B B B. That's y'all. Y'all know how to lose, bro. You know, before you, you know, you gotta crawl before you walk. You know what I'm saying? You know, you gotta smile before you talk. So you gotta you gotta lose for real to really know what it's like to win. But hey, that's all I got, man. Thumbs up the video, share the video, subscribe to the channel, and the subscribe button is the bell icon button. Hit all notification, increase chance, get notifications. We go live or drop video financially. Uh want to support the channel, cash up, dollar sign, CJ Good313, Venmo CJ Good313, PayPal link in the description. Hit the link tree, find me on Twitter, Instagram, Spotify, Anchor, Cash App, Venmo, PayPal. Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, the whole nine. Appreciate y'all for supporting the channel. Let me know what you girls and guys think in the comment section. Peace.